Hello everyone, welcome to the weekly update video for RS3. Now this week we have a combat cleanup strike. Uh, so this is a ninja strike, essentially all focused around getting combat cleaned up. Uh, so some of the highlights include elite dungeon drops have a unified drop rate per clear. This includes chances for or changes for duos and trios chasing those eldritch crossbow drops. Uh, fighting Virago fight will be pacier and raking on Raksha more consistent. Abilities have been updated and including the Smoke Tendril. Get ready for some guaranteed critical hits. Uh, boss fights can now be measured in milliseconds. Time to snatch a new personal best by 0.6 if you can. Uh, we'll get more into that into the patch notes. Up next we have the Prime Gaming. So if you have it. Uh, this month, you get 7 days of membership, a currency pack stuffed with 35 treasure hunter keys and 200 rune coins, and you have until, well, no, you can start claiming it on March 15th, so pretty directly. Actually, for most places, you can claim it already. We need to showcase, we have some different uh, renditions here, if you will, of the imps, the old implings as we know them. But we have the Essence Impling, Zombie Imp, the Pirate Imp, and the Dragon Imp. This was made by Glacite, and it looks rather rather impressive, and it would be nice to see them actually get updated as well. We have some new renditions for the Paladin, Knight, and the Hero. Of course, these are all fan arts, uh, but new renditions for the fan arts. And this has been by Quadri. Actually, really impressive if you ask me. Uh, then we have a, uh, a rendition of the Dragon Rider's Lance by Tomcat Arts, which kind of gives it a little bit more flair than what it's used to. And then we have, of course, who can, uh, who doesn't know about Presley? Uh, but we have the pretzel, and they're shrugging, struggling with their pets, if you will. Uh, a lot of boss pets. <laughs> And then, of course, the infamous Legend underscore Arts, Legend Arts, who uh, did the Abyssal Lord some very well justice, including how horrifying that really would be to see. So do check that out. There's also the Pink Skirts events, which is going to be Corporal Beast by Patrick Kay and the Clackworthy. Uh, this will be, was today, actually, at 1900 Game Time, World 123, Corporal Beast later, FC is Patrick Kay. Skill and Chill, hosted by Matt Clicker and the Little Tuzzies Clan. Uh, this will be Monday, today, March 14th at 2300 Game Time, World 85 at Birthwork Bank. FC is the Little Tuzzies. Then we have the Dagonoth Kings. So this is hosted by Mercy and the Dung Titans, Saturday, March 19th at 1300 Game Time, World 35. This will be on World Birth Island Dungeon, and the FC is Dung Titan. And that is... Good chunk of today's stuff, except for now we got to go into the patch notes. But before we go into the patch notes, I do actually want to let you guys know there is the Jagged's launcher. The open beta is currently live. How, um, and for those who are kind of curious, um, if you use Steam, it's a lot like Steam where you only have to occasionally re enter credentials like your uh, authenticator credentials. So it's a lot like that, just it's the new variant for the. NXT if you just download it that way rather than if you were to have it through Steam or something like that So the ninja strike the boss encounters first up we're going with Virago So they remove the delay at the end of each gap or jump within the borehole making the transition smoother Added a timer bar to Virago to showing charge time for the entry attack Reduce the charge time of Virago's entry attack from 33 cycles, 19.8 seconds, to 20 cycles uh, every 12, well, up to 12 seconds. Virago's entry attack now deals 70% of your max life points in normal mode and 90% in hard mode, as opposed to the fixed amount shared between players. The encounter will start even if the player is killed by Virago entry's attack. Uh, in solo encounters, players can now jump the gap in the first phase without needing Virago to be facing away from them. In the phase two, the gravity fields required to progress have been reduced from four to two. In phase two, the bring him down activity is now twice as fast. 
increases the bleed damage from 150 to 250 in normal da uh, normal mode and from 250 to 400 in hard mode to accommodate the change. Raksha will no longer change targets unexpectedly as it has been doing in rare cases. Uh, this will most likely stop Raksha from attacking the first player to attack instead of targeting the player who began the encounter. Updated the rockfall damage area from 7x7 7 7 to 5x5 5 5 to better fit the size of the visuals. In phase 4, various block tiles have been removed from the west pipes. Also in phase 4, the shadow enema will now be absorbed more consistently when moving through within the close proximity. The Shadow Anima no longer has an absorb option to prevent accidental interactions. Queen Black Dragon reduced the length of the intro animation for the players who have previously defeated the Queen Black Dragon. Next, reduce the length of the intro animation to allow the encounter to start faster. Tezkalzuk, the portal at the War's Retreat in the Max Guild, can now be attuned to an alternate portal arriving point. Uh, in front of Tezcal Zuck. The faithful portal at the War's Retreat has been updated with similar functionalities. Elite Dungeons, the drop rate of unique items across the most has been increased to give uni unified drop rate per clear. Temple of Amanishi, ancient scales will now drop from Siru at 50% and 33% of the solo rate in duo trio modes. Respectively, these rates are per player. Dragon Kennel Laboratory, the Draconic Energy will now drop from the Blackstone Dragon at a 50% and 33% of the solo rate in duo and trio mode, respectively. So, the more people you have, the lower your chances are. Uh, these rates are per player. Greater Ability Codexes or Codices from Asalern, Varric Lith, and Blackstone Dragon per player. Uh, so, solo is 110,000, becomes 120 and 10,000. Duo went from 60 uh, out of 10,000, which is unchanged, and trio is 40 out of 10,000, which is unchanged. So, solo got a little bit of a buff. The Shadow Reef, the Eldritch crossbow pieces from the Ambassador per player. Solo is unchanged at 180 out of 10,000. Duo is now 60, well, was 60 out of 10,000 and is now 90 out of 10,000. Trio was 38 out of 10,000 and is now 60 out of 10,000. Abilities and spells. Smoke tendrils uh, up first. Uh, it's not a bug, it's a feature, so just a heads up. If you've been using the Smoke Cloud or the Staff of Armadillo since their recent introduction, you may have happened to know upon a hidden bonus. They both work with the Smoke Tendrils abilities to guarantee a critical strike. With this feature wasn't originally intended, um, while this feature wasn't originally intended, it's led to some interesting interactions that they rather like. So they made some change to ensure critical strikes functionality is part of the Smoke Tendrils ability itself rather than a bug. So a happy accident. Uh, damage is now calculated in a more standardized way. It will no longer give adrenaline twice per hit when affected by the tsunami ability. It will no, uh, it will be affected by both the precise and equilibrium invention perks. It will give critical strike when each hit reliably. The damage inflicted on the player is now calculated separately from the damage dealt. A critical strike that increases the damage to the top 95% can still occur through the Biting Invention perk and other bonuses. The Ruby Aurora spell now re uh, reliably applies the buff to other players. The Havoc Snipe and Dragon Breath of Brilli uh, blah, 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 blah. abilities can now be used to temporarily disable Accuracy and the Doom's, uh, Doom's Prayers. Uh, the... Impatient perk will now work with Slice, Piercing Shot, Rack, and Rack and Ruin. The Surge Escape and Bladed Dive abilities will no longer cause you to enter a combat stance. Uh, using these abilities while in combat stance will still maintain it. Uh, using these abilities while Adrenaline is draining will still cause you to enter a combat stance. So if you have any kind of Adrenaline, uh, you will be in a combat stance. Herblore Bombs. 
and increased the max throw range to 10 tiles, updated the throw option to use on the active target, improved the use functionality, so when used from the backpacking, you can now target uh, ground coordinates. The bomb can now be thrown at NPC more consistently, which notably fixes the issues with large bosses that are surrounded by blocking and, um, you know, etc. Uh, this is by Estelarn and Raksha, for example. When dragging a bomb to the bar, you will now be able to choose the interaction mode you use to wish, or you wish to use. Uh, this will allow you to use keybinds for both the throw and use options. Okay, so boss kill times have been updated to include milliseconds, added a new option in the tar settings to toggle precise adrenaline value, which shows decimal values for adrenaline if necessary. This can be found under settings slash combat and action bar slash action bar. Increase the size of various reward chests, elite dungeon chests from 32 to 48, croasis chests from 30 to 48, Added a buff bar icon that displays the active ammunition in the player's quiver. If the quiver is empty, only an image of the quiver itself will show. When saving and loading a preset with the exact matching enabled, the contents of the quiver will now be respected. The ancient elven uh, ritual shard cooldown now resets when using the upgraded war's altar within war's retreat. Training dummies at Warriors Retreat now have a 10k damage cap and a 12k damage cap for critical hits. Introduce Dragon, Undead, and Demon Training Dummies to Dispensers at Warriors Retreat. Remove the question mark text from the Liberation of Mass Cap Boss interface. The Insane Reaper achievement now displays the requirements to show which collection blogs the player has completed so that they can better track their progress. NPC health bars now make use of the comma separators with displaying health values over 10,000. Other, an early bird bonus was introduced with the new Slayer Abyssal, or well, new Abyssal Slayer creatures, giving the players a higher chance to receive Abyssal Slayer creatures as a Slayer task. As it has now been two weeks since release, the bonus has been removed. Boss Slayer and Treasure Trail Collection Log achievements are no longer marked as hidden in the achievement interface. Updated the requirements for description of the Kandran Monastery Teleport and the Manor Farm Teleport spells. The fourth withdrawal option on the seed bag now withdraws the correct amount of seeds based on the amount specified in the bank window. A pop-up will now appear when, uh, whenever a new item for the collection log is obtained. Uh, this can be toggled within the settings interface and interface windows or information windows. Soul rune production has been increased to give triple the amount of runes per charge than previously XP remains unaffected. The Trollheim teleport spell has been updated to better discern it from the Taverly teleport. A Tetra Compass location within uh, Tyrannon has been moved to for better ease of access. The render distance of players and NPCs in the wilderness have been increased to match the rest of the world. Uh, this restriction was originally introduced to match the Java client, which has been since, you know, depreciated or deprecated, whatever. Uh, legacy hit spots can now be selected for miscellaneous hit spots, such as poison, heal, split soul, etc. The tab key for the... Oh, the tab key can now be used for a custom keybind. As a result of this, the reply message feature can now be bound to an alternate non-printable key. Uh, remove the coral hiding behind the signposts of Ardon. Bladed Dive ability now resets its cooldown after killing Living Rock Strikers and Living Rock Protectors. Movement uh, no longer stalls while using the Loved Up Rest animation. Equipping a Slayer Helm or Mask after the NPC dies, but before the drop appears, will no longer double the drop without the progression, progressing the kill count on the item. For a drop to be doubled, the items must be worn for 10 seconds before the drop appears. Whetstones can now be used to repair the fleeting boots. Cosmetics are no longer forcefully changed when entering a sinkhole. The Blast Furnace... Blast Fusion Hammer can no longer be equipped in the main hand. Players can no longer attempt to recolor Biscuit Pet. Uh, Brill 
The Fox Duder's name is no longer censored whenever it is typed in chat. Uh, fix an issue with pickup sticks referring to an incorrect location of familiar familiarization. Fix an issue with the Glacierites and Arch Glacier Arms HP resetting during an encounter. Fix an issue with the reprisal going to be active activated without a target and with an ability queue turned on. Fix an issue with the magic note paper not triggering, well, not noting the larger sandstone blocks, uh, so 2, 5, and 10 kg. Fix an issue where the weapons on the player's back would bounce while wearing the Cottontail Knight chestplate. Defense pylons can no longer attack player in the boss arena. And Xavier's pet green coloring is now consistent when overriding legendary pets when summoned by itself. Quite a bit of patch notes this week, guys, so thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, later, guys.